Total War Pharaoh brings us back to the Bronze Age collapse. It's roughly 1200 years BC. It's a time of turmoil and apocalyptic events. As designers, we were faced with the challenge, how do we represent this fascinating and apocalyptic time of human history? Finally, we came up with the idea of the Pillars of Civilization system. We aim to represent the collapse with three very distinctive visual stages. We start the game in a state of civilization prosperity. It's bright, it's sunny. Early in the game, the first sea peoples will arrive, notifying that not all is fine in paradise. Settlements will be demolished, they will be lost, they will change hands. Times are getting tougher. Once those first waves arrive, they will coincide with the first civil war in the game. This little perfect storm will bring down the civilization level to crisis. And crisis is a different place. The sun is covered by sand, the feeling of doom and gloom on the horizon is felt and it's here. So the player needs to really start building their armies. Disasters will become more prevalent. The player will experience earthquakes, floods, droughts. They will cover enormous parts of the land. So the player will be in the mode of survival. The further we go down the line, the stronger the sea people become. We go into even darker stage, the collapse state of the civilization, where the disasters are even more prevalent. So, just like in history, things get tougher. The player will face the challenges of the sea people and the challenges of the disaster and the, the bad visual mood across the game. They will need to prepare, they will need to grow their armies, and they need to be resilient in order to survive. In Total War Pharaoh, most Egyptian and Hittite factions will be subject to a supreme leader. This is the leader with the most legitimacy in the eyes of the people and the gods of that realm. For Egyptians, this is of course the Pharaoh, and for Hittites, this is of course the Great King. The Pharaoh and the Great King each have access to various royal powers, which allow them to radically impact the game. For example, you can forcefully annex a faction if you deem it too weak, or you have abilities that allow you to completely dominate the royal courts in your realm. Or, in the case of the Pharaoh, you can also use corvée labor to accelerate construction in a whole province. In any case, these powers will be able to really give you an edge on the campaign map. On top of that, the Pharaoh also has access to a regalia of iconic historical crowns. These will give you various effects. We can start, for example, with the Nemes crown, which is the iconic crown that the pharaohs are depicted with. Then you have Kepresh, the blue crown of war, which is worn usually by the pharaoh when campaigning. Then you have Deshret and Hedjet, which are the red and white crowns of Lower and Upper Egypt, which can even be worn by pretenders under certain circumstances, such as during a civil war. And finally, of course, you have Pshent, the double crown of unified Egypt and ultimate authority. In any case, these crowns will be able to help you during a campaign and have an effect corresponding to their historical reality. We can think about sea peoples as the Vikings of the Bronze Age collapse, and there are many similarities. They were tough, strong, and probably cool, but not for the people in Egypt, because they disrupted their normal way of life. They start appearing early in the game with small waves of armies showing around the coasts, letting the player know that something is wrong out there in the sea. The player needs to be prepared in order to face this ever-growing menace. Late in the game, the player will face the biggest and toughest wave of sea peoples. And they should be the make-or-break moment for the player. They would either be forgotten by history, or they would push through, be the conqueror, and remain in the history as the ruler who brings civilization back to prosperity. 